Good morning, everybody. It's uh, three thirty in the morning. Just getting overhead cold, and I need my coffee. We received the manuals finally for Hako. I'll link in the description Lewis Rossman's uh, video covering uh, their repair program. Um, this right here. The right to repair manual access. Well, they finally uploaded manuals. Those manuals are right here. Let's just use the FM203 for example. See right here? FM203 revision 2023-15. That's the one I downloaded. That's right here. Here is their user manual or instruction manual. Okay. Hako, this is pitiful. I mean, they just basically gave repair technicians a big fuck you. And this is no joke. This is, this is very horrible. Uh, this is worse than Apple's manual. Um, I think they did this in spite just to do something. Um, so that they can say they attempted to comply with right to repair. Um, here is their manual. Let's go through them here. Uh, here's the repair manual. You're going to get the introduction, parts list, equipment tools, checking, disassembly, opening wiring. It says chapter one, introduction. In this manual, technical procedures for replacing genuine parts are described. Well, a part of uh, right to repair is being able to use non-genuine parts if you want. Um, okay. Targeting individual technicians with knowledge, experience, and tools necessary for electronics equipment repair. Fair. Right. But before, before, uh, before performing any tasks, please proves this manual thoroughly to understand its contents. Okay. You guys are going to get a kick out of this crap. Okay. And proceed with the work. In this manual, matters to be attended to are classified. Ooh. And indicated as follows. Please fully understand the content before reading the main text. Hmm. Okay, so they're going to give you a warning that uh, possibly death or injury if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Uh, failure to use genuine parts. Okay, well, I don't see how death or injury can happen if you blow a MOSFET and replace it with the MOSFET you get from DigiKey. Okay, um, fair to use genuine parts or tools or ignoring this warning to engage in incorrect handling. Okay, these are the little symbols I'm going to assume. Um, when repairing, be sure to unplug the power first. Okay, well, sometimes you have to have it powered up to diagnose. Okay, after disassembly and assembly, perform the ins uh, installation with stand testing before applying power for safety. Okay, uh, in case of a blown fuse, replace the damaged part, conduct insulation with stand testing, and then apply power. Okay, they're, they're really focusing on this in insulation with stand testing. Uh, Hawk, are you trying to tell us something? Maybe you got a design flaw? Um, this product is equipped with uh, measures against static electricity, such as uh, impairing conductivity to plastic groundings, soldering iron station during repairs. Uh, I don't give you no repair information so far, so uh, pay sufficient attention and when replacing parts and making repairs. Ensure there's no exposure to live parts damage. Okay, standard bullshit. Okay, so we're gonna get a parts list. Right, so let's go bruise the instruction manual here. Packing and part, and part names, okay. Specifications, okay. Warnings, notes, okay. Iron holder, soldering iron station. Controls operation display. Um, I think it's down at the bottom here. Parts list. Power switch. B2852. B2852. Switch. Uh, 
B2384, B2384, power receptacle, inlet, more coffee. Can you tell what Hawk was doing here? Saying, fuck you. Yeah. That's basically the same shit in that manual. Okay, let's continue down. Oh, maybe we got Phillips head screws, dielectric tester. Okay, here's their test equipment they recommend you have. Checking the performance. Uh, basically, it's telling you uh, turn the power switch on without connecting any soldering iron or connecting cable. The indicator shown, well, that's right here in the manual. It's all in, all in the user manual here. Nothing new. Uh, performance test, inserts the card. These same LEDs right here. Nothing new, nothing worth repair. Um, I mean, this, I don't see how confidential this can be because it's the same crap in the user manual. Um, parameters. Setting and changing the temperatures, um, entering the tip offset value, uh, replacing the tip. Oh, we are at parameter settings. Here's the parameter settings. They're just a little bit, uh, you know, auto sleep. There's the auto sleep setting. Auto sleep setting. Low temperature error setting. Is that in here? Low temperature limit. Error setting, yes, it's right there. Offset free mode, offset free mode. Buzzer sound setting, buzzer sound setting, buzzer sound setting mode. 06, temperature alert. 07, they just name it a little thing. Auto sleep function. 08, auto shut off, auto shut off. 09, Auto channel switching, dual channel control mode, 10, dual channel control setting, initial reset, how to reset it. Uh, I don't think that's in here, but um, I think it was in the manual someplace. Maintenance, inspecting. Oh, here's, here's how to check the, uh, in the user manual, how to check um, your tips. Uh, I don't see that in the uh, repair manual. I think that should be in the repair manual, but here, here's how to disassemble it. Cover screws, how many screws there are. P a picture that you could take yourself of how the wiring's routed, wiring and screws. And most techs will take a picture of how the wiring's routed just so they can refer to it back if it's not in the manual. Um, uh, so we got pan head to screw, apply silicon grease. Okay, well, if you're taking it apart and you notice it has sil heat sink compound, you're going to put heat sink compound back. That grease on the 203s does dry up. That is, I don't see any repair information here. Um, you know, uh, screws, um, how it all goes together. Um, Disassembly, how to remove that part, the receptacle, where where to put how to put your washers on, where to connect your D chain, S side, um, you know, jack. Okay, yeah, those fail, those break. Um, inspection after repair work. Well, wait a second. What repair work? I didn't see anything in here, no service notes that hey a quick fix if you know your your uh, tips not heating check this MOSFET check that resistor check this not even that stuff um, here's error messages did it have error messages in here I don't I don't think uh, I don't think the repair manual even had the error messages hmm, I figured a repair manual would have error messages um, Hmm. No, nope, no error messages. So uh, that's in their troubleshooting. So no, no troubleshooting information in the repair manual. I mean, is this a big fuck you from Hako? Um, you know, 
they're they're really focused on the uh, dielectric voltage withstand tests. Um, so, oh, here's a wiring diagram. But check this out. You ain't gonna believe this. This confidential wiring diagram. Check this out. Optional parts list. Tip parts. Tip parts. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. It's a direct copy. Like, they cut and paste it from the user manual. And that's it. It's all you get from them. Come on, Hako. It, it, you know, you're, you're supposed to be providing documentation, schematics, and stuff. This repair manual is just a big fuck you. So, um, as I drink out of my Vader cup, It what, 3.30 in the morning, 4 in the morning now? Um, I gotta get the chickens up in a few minutes, but here is uh, Hako's repair manual. Yes, all that, all that complaining, all that hold back, oh, we can't release it, we can't release it until, you know, the, the government makes us, until the law makes us. You know, um, give us this shit. Well, my next video is going to be how to file a right to repair complaint in the state of California, whether you're in California or not, because repair service technicians have what they call an economic nexus. That economic nexus allows us to file a complaint and allows us access. If you are a California company, to these repair documents. And it don't matter if you're a California repair company or a California company either. If I have a customer in California and they contract with me to repair their device as a third party repair shop with a customer in California, they're supposed to provide repair documentation. So, Hotco, it's $1,000 a day for the first complaint. $2,000 a day for the second complaint, $5,000 a day for the third and every subsequent complaint. So I'm going to try to get at least 200 people to file complaints. That's a million dollars a day. Um, schematics, firmware for the basic equipment. Quit treating us repair technicians that work on items that are tens of thousands of dollars thinking we can't repair our repair tools. The intent of the legislature was to prevent this type of bullshit. So there you guys have it. That's the repair manual Hako released. Have a good day. I mean, if you like this, like, subscribe, and comment. I'm going to go let the chickens out and go back to bed.